What's up guys? After a little hiatus on the United Fishing Reports Facebook page, I apologize about that. We have a lot going on. Um, this is one of the things you can kind of see that door there. We're actually in my studio slash fishing room that I'm making at my house. Uh, right now it's a disaster. Everything's literally just piled up. Um, but I'm, I'm actually going to organize everything and have a fishing room in the house and also kind of a double as a studio. As that develops, especially with the organiza organizational stuff with the fishing gear, I'm going to tune you guys in on that because, man, it is a struggle. There's a lot of info out there, um, and I have a lot of stuff. Um, we're here to talk about rigging kingfish. Rigging for kingfish, guys. Okay, uh, pretty much a stinger rig is going to work for anything that is out there biting right now. Okay, uh, it, anything. Kudas, kings, you know, in this blended water, mahi, wahoo. Uh, I catch majority of my cobia like this. Um, just free line and a live bait, guys. It's the most simple thing in the world. Um, but I'm going to show you what works for me, okay? So, and you can get all of this stuff at Palmetto State Armory, all right, guys? So, starting off, my bag's dirty. I'm going to use that 44-pound wire, all right, guys? Um, I just kind of get whatever's available because at the end of the day, uh, we are still, you know, in the old Rona Supply BS. So, that being said, if they do not have, like, a 44-pound or a 40-pound range, um, I would beef it up a little bit. Um, you can go down, but you got to be very cognizant of that because obviously you're going to lose abrasion resistance and strength. Moving on to the first step of our stinger rig. I get fired up about kingfishing, guys. I'm going to go about yay long. That's probably what I'd say 20 inches, guys. You can always find a, a place on you to, to get a decent measurement. So for this, I do about armpit to wrist, okay? I'm a, I'm a little dude though, I'm 5'7 and I got T-Rex arms, legit, my arms are too short for my body size. Um, so that's what I do right there guys, and then I take my old worn out cutters here and snip them off. Guys, these are just uh, jewelry pliers, I think I call them hot hobby pliers. Uh, easy, easy to use, pretty cheap, um, a lot easier to use for what we're doing than the bulky stuff. Um, and I did not bring a set of normal pliers up. I did have a pair on this floor somewhere. Oh man, those are rusted. Do you have a pair that are not rusted? Nope, those are rusted. Pause. Unpause. Ha! Alright guys, actually found my hobby pliers downstairs. So, moving on guys. I uh, don't have what size swivel it is right here because, well, I'm super squared away and I actually just put them in this thing so they wouldn't fall all over the place while we were going offshore. Guys, I'll use this, so these hooked uh, boxes, as swivel boxes. Fit in your pocket. Put a rubber band around them there for when you're going offshore. Learn that one the hard way. So guys, you just get the little, you know, 75 pound swivel or lighter. You're not going to be putting a lot of pressure on these fish guys, or you shouldn't be anyway. So obviously we're just going to go straight through like that, leave you more than enough to play with guys. I'd rather have too much than too little, okay? So guys go through there, you're just going to fold it back on itself. So now you got that loop, okay, you get on this side of the table for this, and then Oh, I just spilled a bottle of water. So then guys, all you're going to do is you're going to get a good bite, okay? You're going to get a good bite right there, all right? I call this the right knot. There's actually directions on the package for a haywire twist. Um, this is what I have used since I started fishing. I didn't realize the instructions were on the back. I'm a knucklehead, so I kind of made up my own thing. Once it was pointed out to me that that was different, I started calling it the right knot, uh, W-R-I-H-G-H-T. After my homie there, it got killed in 2010 in Afghanistan, taking the fight to the enemy, baby. So guys, I made an X. 
So I did about five loops. You gotta make sure that your wire that you're looping is staying in contact with your main wire, all right? Like any knot, whether it's wire or um, uh, rope or, or, or any, any material, nylon, fishing, whatever it is, uh, you, you wanna make sure you're getting good contact because friction is what makes the knot work. So then you're gonna go, after you create the X, you're gonna go below toward the hook, away from the swivel, you're gonna go three more, and you can do more if you want, three complete times around. And guys, this isn't the best one I've ever tied. Oh, it's actually, that's not bad. It's not the best one I've ever tied, but you can see that right there. That is not going to come undone, guys. When I'm tying wire for 1,000 to 2,000 pound sharks, I use the same knot. So it will work. Uh, if you want to use something else, by all means, guys. It's not Just because this works, that means something else isn't, all right? There ain't no top secret things of fishing, contrary to popular belief by some of these yahoos. Let's see. Oh, gosh, dude. Woo. I'm using air hooks today, guys. I'm using size four. All right, that's what I prefer. You can go up or down. Um, I actually do like to keep a few tied up. All right, I do like to keep a few bigger ones tied up. Um, if the bite's real finicky, you can try dropping the size of the hook. I, I haven't found that being a huge issue here in Savannah. Um, but you can go up in the size. You know, if you're running a big blue runner for a bait, for example, you know, you got a giant blue runner out there just, you know, trying to catch that 40, 50 pound kingfish to win that tournament. You, then you want a little bit bigger, and then you might even want to go bigger wire, guys. I would keep the same wire, though. One reason, too, guys, little, uh, I, I get random thoughts thrown in. Another thing is you got to keep in mind, guys, the more limber your wire it is, the less stress it is on the bait, and the longer that bait's going to last in, uh, in the water. As this, as we progress in the summer, and in in this, uh, this water temperature becomes like jacuzzi water, you really, really want to do everything you can to keep your baits alive. So guys, we're going to go right through there, the treble hook, just like we did the swivel. All right, I'm going to tie this one real quick, just, just to save some time, just because these guys can rewind and, and see how I did that last one, okay? So boom, make my cross if my fingers would work. 39 years old with arthritis. I'm sure there's plenty of y'all out there with that. Y'all feel the pain, baby. So boom, boom, boom. Made my X, did three more, trim it. So guys, one thing I like to do is, you know, you can tie these when you get out there if you're quick. Um, but I, I like to tie mine the night before when possible. So you want to tie them. By the way, y'all need to go check out Blair Wiggins Outdoor. That uh, Jimmy's fishing tournament was this weekend. Not this Jimmy, a much cooler Jimmy than myself that is no longer with us. Uh, Blair won the Snoopy Division down there at Team Star Right. It was pretty cool. Go to their YouTube channel and check it out. I'm sure it's up there. So guys, you're gonna cut your second piece. I did that about eight inches, okay? Once again, I would, if you're tying the night before, I would tie different lengths, guys. You know, there's a lot of times, you know, we're getting these baby pogies, right? Then you get the frying size pogies. Then you might want to use a blue runner like we talked about, okay? So don't be afraid. It's not textbook, guys. Do different stuff. Have different options available. All right. Ouch. Woo! Got trouble up under that fingernail, baby. That'll get you going. That'll wake you up. That'll wake you up. There we go. I'm just doing the right knot again, guys. And there's my three below the main knot. And you guys can see how quick that thing is to tie, especially once you've done it about 5,000 or so times. Just like shooting, guys. Just like shooting as a young ranger. Dry fire, dry ups, everything else. The knots are no different, guys. The more times you do this, the better you'll get at it. And then you'll be able to do it in 20 knot wins on tournament day. And, do it on the boat and not have to worry about it. You'll, you'll have complete trust in it because you got the reps in. All right, guys, one last time. So boom, we got two, three, 
for fifth one coming around and making an X. Ouch, that didn't go under the fingernail, that went into the cuticle. So that was something new on this rig. We got the under the nail and the cuticle. All right, guys, and that is how I tie a stinger rig. All right, some people might want to go shorter on the leader for some reason. I don't do that. That'll allow that pogey to swim up parallel with your main line, okay? Or, excuse me, pass parallel with your main line. So what's going to happen when that kingfish comes along with those scapel-like teeth and smokes him? He's going to get your main line, too, and you're done, son. So guys, we oh, oh, another thing that you can do with bigger baits like a blue runner, or if you are getting short strikes, okay, there are certain times, especially this time of year, when the water temperature gets hotter, the fish are just being finicky, being fish. So guys, you'll come up and you'll pull four baits in a row to where they just bite the tail, they're hitting the belly, whatever. Don't be afraid to throw a third hook on there and, and, and let that joker just, just fly free. So you wanna do this hook in the nose and I'm gonna have on the boat videos for this. This is gonna be a repetition thing. You're gonna see a lot more of this. Through the nose, you want a bow. You want a bow. You don't wanna stretch that bait out because he can't swim, right? If you're, if you're stretched out like this, you, you can't swim. You can't do that fish wiggle. Can't do the fish, that should be a dance, babe. The fish wiggle. Uh, you, you can't do the wiggle, guys. But if, if you're limber, you, you can wiggle a little bit, just like that fish, guys. So you don't want to stress out your bait. This, this is the setup that I like to use, okay? When I am live bait, stinger rig, fishing, this is the dial of dark water, all right? It's a seven foot heavy, heavy rod rated for 20 to 40 pound um, uh, line, guys. I've got it paired, paired up with a Shimano Torium. I put the 20 on here. Um, I've got, I think I've got 300 yards of uh, spider wire motor grade. This is 80 pound that I'm showing you. I've got 30 pound on here, okay? But that's that spider wire durable. You can get it PSA, Palmetto State Armory. All right, guys, you can get it there. Um, and then I topped it with, this, this mono, I don't know what's so special about it. There is definitely a difference. This stuff is tough as nails. It is Berkeley Pro Spec Chrome. I use the high vis. Here's the 30 pound. That's what's on this reel. I use the high vis for my trolling gear. Okay, guys? That's what I use. Now, if you're just, if it's a crazy bite, guys, you can tie your stinger rig. You can tie your stinger rig straight to this high vis. Um, I rarely see a problem with it. I, I don't really notice a whole lot of it from some of the bites, but usually to be on the safe side, especially when I have my buddy Randall on the boat, he is a perfectionist. So if I tell him something could get an uh, inkling of a chance of a bite, he is all over it. So I'm gonna show you what we do for that, guys. So this is so Berkeley Pro Spec Chrome. They also make Flora. Okay. So I take a I take the 30 pound Fluoro. Make sure I grab the right one. I did. Go ahead and get that tape off of there. And I'm gonna put put it back together because this stuff does not have memory and wants to just go everywhere. So guys, we know that fluorocarbon is more abrasion resistant and less visible to fish. So one thing you can do, I'm a whopping five foot seven. So I'm gonna have to go, I think what they used to call it, a good arm's length. I don't know if that's a universal term or just ranger school. So we're gonna go about two arm's lengths for me. All right, guys, uh, once again, if you are in clear water, you definitely need to do this and you might even wanna go with even more 20 foot or so. But let's go with about, I almost said 12 with two full arm's lengths. Let's go to about 10 feet. <laughs> I'm trying to give myself credit there. And then guys, all, all we're going to do is, I think this is, I think this is the uni to uni. Okay, it's the mustache knot. Actually, we'll do a separate video with this, but what we're going to do is you're going to take your leader material, which is our fluorocarbon. You're going to run some on either, man, I sat that down with some authority, baby. 
And that Ranger sticker on there got me all pumped up. Got to give that war a chance. Let them politicians mess it up. So guys, what you're going to do is you're going to loop this joker around. This is your leader. So with mono, if you're going mono and flora to flora, you need like five or six loops. But what you're going to do is you're going to loop it around both. So I'm just going to do two, three, four, five. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side, guys. You're going to come across, this is going to be, I'm going to need Ryan to hold the camera one day and actually do a proper video on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring those pretty close together over both of them again. One, two, three, four, and oh my gosh, fingers work. Five. Oh, come on, guys, share with my fingers. Whew. Boom, shakala, they worked. And then you want to get it wet? Just like that. You're going to start pulling them tight. You're going to see how they're cinching down, guys. So you want to get them pretty cinched down so they don't slip on top of each other. Why am I messing that up? Maybe I, maybe I need to watch more how-to videos, right? There we go. Greg taught me this, guys. My big brother Greg from Starbright. And then you can go boom and then boom. And if you don't say boom a couple times, guys, it, it won't work. Science. Trust the science. <laughs> so guys, look right. I mean, that ain't gonna that ain't going anywhere. What I like to do also, don't do this in front of your dentist. I like to crimp. I like to crimp my taglines with my teeth. It's just an extra piece of mine. What that got, does, guys, is with that mono and that fluoro, it gives it a little a little bump. It, it, it creates a little bit of wide when you make it when you bite down on it. So that way, God forbid, if there is any slippage in the knot, which there really shouldn't be, this is the most straight, whoa, this is the most straightforward knot in the world, um, and it's super easy to tie. I mean, it's not going anywhere, but if it does start to slip, those little crimps will catch it. It's just a peace of mind. So guys, you can do one of two things here. You can tie your loop knot, awesome knot. Um, I just I just tied a good old fisherman's knot. One, two, three, four, five. One to grow one, because I like the number six, baby. Pull it right through there, just like that, guys. Just like that. And then the shorts tighten down. Ouch. Got one in the wrist. Cuticle under the nail. And now the wrist, baby. We about ready kingfish. We just got to draw some blood. I shouldn't say that. I'm probably about to draw blood. So, guys, that right there, that's your stinger, baby. That is absolutely it. Now you're ready to rock and roll, guys. You throw your pogey on there and just slow troll around. Just bump troll drift. Guys, it's something else you can do is you can oh, 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 oh. Mm, nice and slow we got treble hooks all over the place um so guys you can you can run long drifts if you're at the snapper bank or you're drift fishing whenever you're on this you're gonna have a guy back there next to the live well his job before he bottom fishes on a drift you sling that joker out the back of the boat guys and, and keep it out there on your drift you're anchored up and fishing, I always run at least one flat line. If you got somebody back there, it's pretty good at what they're doing. Go ahead and throw two or three out, all right? Um, when you're doing that, you can throw a uh, small egg weight, like a quarter ounce egg weight at the top, okay? At the top of your stinger rig, that gets one down there, all right? Especially during this cobia season. Gets one down there, about halfway down that middle water column. Throw one on top. If you want to get crunkified with it, you can go to the opposite side of the boat and actually shoot one down almost to the bottom. Now, one thing I do want to show, guys, is a lot of us, especially right now with this economy, are fishing on a budget, okay? So this setup right here, and this is not what I would consider a high dollar setup, um, but it is a very nice setup, all right? You're, you're, you're looking at, you're looking with the line and everything, you're looking close to probably 
500. You're probably pushing the $500 range, all right? You know, we're on the boat. We got six trolling rods with us, all right? That's three grand, guys. That is a lot of freaking money. I am a broke fisherman, okay? That is a lot of money. If you have money, that's still a lot of money. So, guys, this is one thing that you can do, too. I love, love, love spinning gear. Maybe because I need surgery on this and I can fight fish with this one. Anyway, <laughs> all jokes aside, I really do love spinning gear a lot. You can pick up this spin fisher combo. It's a pin spin fisher combo. Amazing reel. We know pins quality. Uh, my favorite American made. USA, baby. Uh, guys, and this is this is what I bottom fish with on the boat. But guys, just because something's a bottom fishing rod. It, it doesn't mean that it does not do purpose, right? I mean, some things are. This is not. This is a multi-purpose rod. So this thing, this is a seven-footer, fast action, 20 to 40-pound mono, 30 to 65-pound braid. All right, guys, what I threw on here, I threw on the spider wire Dura braid. That's the only braid I'm using right now. Um, just awesome, awesome stuff. So, guys, we got this right now tipped with... 30 pound, okay? So guys, what I like to do with these setups, um, I wish I had another one free rigged up here, I don't. But what I like to do, my cutters are dull as heck, or got a bunch of nicks in them there. What I like to do, guys, is you can see, you can see how, how, how much room is left on that spool. What I like to do, guys, is I like to fill it up with 60 pound, all right? So that way I'm not recutting leaders, and then you can just tie your single drop bottom rig, which I'm gonna show you in another video, and you're good to go. You can tie, I always want lighter line with my live baits for less stress on it, okay? Because it's less stress on it, period. One, you can tip that with 30 pound while you're out there. Guys, you can throw it out there with 60 pound mono. It is not gonna affect anything except for your bait might die sooner. Okay, so what you can do, guys, instead of going out there and buying all these $500 combos, um, if you can swing it, definitely do it because it's gangster. We all like doing gangster stuff, baby. But if, if you guys are fishing more on a budget or you just don't fish that much, it's not even fishing on a budget. If you're not out there all the time, there's no reason to put all your money into it. You can get these spin fisher combos and you can, you can get five of them. That means four of you can be bottom fishing and you have one to sling out as, as a live bait. You can, t you can tip them out there with 30 pound, uh, 30 pound uh, fluoro and boom, you're, you're, you're trolling all day. Um, now I would, not, I would not go out trolling for mahi or using my plugs or lip divers with this. That's just not what it's made for. Um, but as far as just live baiting, going out there during the busy season, when it's summertime and everybody wants to be out there, that's, uh, that's how I would do it. So guys, uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you all enjoy the Starbright Studio. Uh, they probably wouldn't want me calling that in, in this condition, but guess what? That's what they stuck with for now, baby. Uh, as always, we appreciate everybody at Starright and all their support. Absolutely love you guys. Um, you can pick up anything that you saw in the video at PSA. Till next time, guys. We'll see y'all out on the water.